In this video, we're going to learn about blocks in AutoCAD. So first of all, what is a block? A block is an object that you create and um, you can make it into what's called a block so that you can insert it over and over again. So for example, looking at our guest cottage here, these are the blocks that you're going to create. Um, and a, a perfect example of a block is this thing right here. It's a ceiling fan. Now ceiling fans, you would not draw a ceiling fan every time you need a ceiling fan in every drawing that you do. So what we end up doing is we draw it once, we create a block out of it, and notice when I click on it, this whole thing highlights as one piece. So that's what, um, it, this, this one has already been made into a block. And then when I need that ceiling fan at any later date within this drawing, I can come to the insert menu. The very first icon here is to insert a block, and I can choose the fan. I have a lot of blocks to choose from and I can just insert that fan as needed. So we can create blocks, and then when we need them, we insert the block into our drawing. So how do you make a block? So we're gonna start off with that. A very important thing, I, I made a copy of this ceiling fan over here. So a very important thing to know and remember with blocks is they absolutely should originally be created created on layer zero. So I've got this block here. The lines are all on, on layer zero and it's just a bunch of arcs and uh, lines in a circle. So whenever I'm ready to create a block, if I look in my drawing and I come in here and I say insert, I'm in a completely blank drawing. I have not created any blocks, so there are no blocks in my drawing file. This is called my block library. Whereas when I come over to this drawing that I've already made a bunch of blocks in, I come through here and I can scroll through all the blocks that have been created. So I have a lot of blocks in my block library. So let's go back over here to my blank drawing. I have no blocks created. These are just lines, like I said, lines, arcs, and a circle. And what I'm gonna do, I can't insert anything, so I'll create a block. So we'll come to this button right here, which is create a block. And I'm on the insert ribbon, by the way, uh, on the block definition. We're gonna define a block. I'll click create block. This window pops up and there's three things I have to do to create a block. I need to give it a name, so I could call it a fan. I need to select a base point. So when the base point is when I went to insert that block into my drawing, that's where I was holding that block. That's, 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 that was the grip that I was um, selecting to hold that block. So I can pick a base point. This is really important when you do this. If I don't pick a point by default, it goes to zero, 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 wherever that happens to be in my drawing space. The next thing I need to do, so I gave it a name, I selected the base point, and then I need to select the object. So what, what objects are gonna be a part of this block? So I can just highlight all of those at one time, press enter. Notice how it makes a little thumbnail so I can see what my block is gonna look like. And that's it, I just give it a name, base point, and select objects. Now I do have these three options down here, and this is 100% personal preference, but I wanna walk you through it. If I say retain, the minute I click this, when I come back to my drawing, I'll still have the ceiling fan in my block library, but my drawing will have lines and arcs and a circle. Those will all be individual pieces. If I click the option to convert to block, then when I come back to my drawing, this object that I selected here will be a block. So like we saw before, if I click on it, it'll be one piece. This option down here, it sounds kind of scary, but this is actually my favorite one, is delete. So when I'm making this into a block, I can delete the geometry that I had just selected. It goes away on my screen. Regardless of which one you choose here, you will still have that block in your block library. I like the one that says delete, and I'll tell you why, just because a lot of times when I'm making blocks, we might open up a drawing that has multiple blocks that you need to make and create. It's nice, I think it's nice to have those blocks just kind of disappear as needed. Once you've made it, it disappears and you can keep track of which blocks you've already created. But again, this right here, personal preference, it doesn't really matter which option you choose. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the, the retain option. That way these are just lines and circles when I come back to my drawing. Now I do have this option here to open in the block editor. I'll make a different video about the block editor, so I'm gonna uncheck this, but you do have the option that when I say okay, instead of just coming back here to my drawing space, I can come into the block editor. So I'll say okay here. 
looks like nothing happened. I came back and again, like I said, because I chose the retain option, these are just arcs and lines in a circle. But now when I come over here to insert, I can insert a fan. So I click on that. Notice I'm holding it at that base point and wherever I wanna put it, I just set it down and that's it. This is one big block. And I can repeat that to have as many blocks as I'd like in my drawing. Let's come back over here and I want to show you something. So I've got the copy of this block that we had used. Um, I'm going to go ahead and explode it. You can always explode a block, but be careful if you do explode a block, it takes it back down to lines and circles and there is no recreating. Well, you could make a brand new block out of it, but there's no getting that back into the original block that it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this block. Just move it right over here. I'm going to set one copy on the, um, oh, I don't know. Let's just choose anything. So we'll just put it on the center line layer so you can see the dashes and everything. And then we'll have this copy over here still on layer zero. So remember when I told you that all blocks should be created on layer zero? It's important to create that. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to make a good ceiling fan block and a bad ceiling fan block. And I'm going to show you the difference. So we'll come back in here. We're going to say insert. Uh, actually, not insert. We're going to create a block, and I'll call this one fan. Good. I'll select my base point. I will select the objects, and I'll go ahead and delete it just so you can see what happens there. I'll say OK. That's good. It goes away. I still have it there in my block library, though. If I come over here, there it is, fan good. Now I'm going to create another one. That was on layer zero, and I specified the base point. I'm going to create another one, and we'll call this fan bad, if I can spell. Uh, fan bad. I'm not going to pick a base point. So notice how it's zero, zero, zero. That's going to take that wherever zero, zero is in my, in my drawing space. It's going to take that as my base point. So I'm going to pretend like I accidentally forgot to create or set the base point. I'm going to select the objects, press enter, and that's it. I'll, leave, I'll let that one delete as well. So I'll say okay to this. Now I'm going to set my layer to something different. So let's say I need electrical symbols. That's what a fan would be on, right? So we'll come back over here to insert, insert my good fan. Looks good. I see where I'm holding it. I set it down and it is on the electrical symbols layer. It turned pink. If I need to change the layer, I can. I can put it on the hatch layer. You see how it's taking on the properties of all of these other layers? Now, if I do the same thing and I'm going to insert the bad fan and I click here, what happened to my fan? It's not there. I'm on the electrical symbols layer. I should see the fan. But if you remember, we did not set a base point for that fan. So it took the base point as wherever 000 happens to be. And so if I scroll out, look there. There's my block. That is where 000 happened to be in my drawing space. So it inserted the block at that base point, but I never defined the center of this block as a base point. So it's um, uh, already kind of messed up. And what happens, it's really kind of cute. A lot of times um, students will call me over and they're like, I've inserted it. You know, they insert their toilet and they've inserted it, inserted it, inserted it. And they, you know, nothing's happening. We check to see if their layers turned on. Sometimes you'll insert a block on a layer that's turned off and you won't see it. But as you're um, going through that, I can zoom out and it's really cute. They have a bunch of little toilets floating up here in space and that's just because they forgot to set the base point. It's easy to forget, but it makes a really big difference. Now that we know that we forgot the base point, I also wanna show you, look, it's still green and it's still, still got the center line dash to it. If I pull this down, I can put it on any other layer. Didn't turn red, didn't turn blue. Those are visible layers too, text. It still has that same line type. The reason that it did all of that is because I did not create it on layer zero. Layer zero is what keeps it neutral. It allows it to take on the properties of any other layer once you've created that block. If you create it on a specific layer, I can click on it. It tells me it's on the text layer, but it is definitely not. It tells me it's on electrical symbols now, but it is not. Um, if I were to come in here and freeze the electrical symbols layer, it warns me, okay, it's still the electrical symbols layer is, is uh, um, 
Oh, it can't, won't let me freeze my current layer. Okay, turn the current layer off. There we, I turned it off, but I still see it. Even though it says it's on electrical symbols, that the thing should have gone away when that layer turned off, but it didn't. So that is what happens with the electrical symbols. Uh, I'm sorry, when you don't create a layer on layer zero. So how do we fix this? And so um, easy to fix. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select that object. There's two different things we need to fix, right? We gotta put a base point in there and we need to go put it on layer zero. So what we can do is we can go into the block editor. There's a couple of ways you can get to it. If you go back to insert, this little guy right here under block definition, we can click on that and go into the block editor. You can highlight the block and right click and say op block editor from here. And it takes you to this new space. I don't see anything else in my drawing. I get a gray background. This little palette over here pulls up and I have a brand new ribbon that shows up. So several things that I need to do here in the block editor. This is editing the definition of this block. I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna tell it to be on layer zero. So remember layer zero is neutral, so I'm putting it back on that neutral layer. And I need to put a new base point in. If this palette, this palette, anytime you go in the block editor, it should pop up under the, the tab that it should default to, parameters. You've got an option here that says base point. If I click on that, now I can just click in the center of my circle and do it. You could also, up here under action parameters, you could pull that down and choose base point. But now I've set, set a new base point. I've put it on layer zero, so I've fixed this block. I'll click on this little check mark to close the block editor. And then it says save changes, yes. Look what happened. Remember it was off here in space. Now it jumped over here. This is why I originally clicked my insertion point. So it found that insertion point, moved it um, so that the base point was right on top of my insertion point. And look, it's taken on the properties now. Because I changed it to layer zero, it's gonna take on the properties of all of these other layers. Um, so super easy to fix if you accidentally do it wrong. But um, uh, it is important just to remember, always start your blocks on layer zero. If you use anybody else's blocks, you can go to Google and you can just Google free CAD blocks and you'll find all kinds of really cool blocks out there, just about anything you could ever want. But be sure if you're using someone else's blocks, I would go into the block editor and just make sure that it's created on layer zero. You know, just because you find it out there does not mean that it is actually drawn to scale or that it's created properly. Anybody can create a block and put it out on the internet. One more thing I want to show you is in this insert uh, menu, I believe this showed up in AutoCAD 2020, um, but if I pull this down, I can look at recent blocks. It takes a little while, but look, these are all the recent blocks that I've used. And it's, that is a super cool thing. You can actually come in here and just drag and drop if I'm like ceiling light, let's grab it and we'll bring it in there. There's an elevation view of a ceiling light that I've used. Here's a window. I can just drag and drop that into my drawing. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. If there's blocks that you're using a lot or you use all the time, you can just pull up this palette and you see all your recent blocks. You can also come in here to current drawing. Now my current drawing has this block and um, the there it is, the window block as uh, blocks that exist in here. That, those would not have been here a few minutes ago, but now that I've inserted it, I'm in the current block drawing blocks and those are options that I have. So this is a pretty cool palette to have. With all palettes, you can always, right underneath that X, you can auto hide. So you can keep it up if you'd like. If you're inserting a lot of blocks, you can auto hide. And then when you hover next to it, it opens up. And when you move away from it, it collapses. So that is it, that's your introduction to blocks. What we're gonna be doing in the blocks unit, which is chapter nine, we're going to come into this guest cottage and we're going to create these blocks. A few of them are given to you already, but ceiling fan, the, the toilet up here, the tub, we're gonna create a lot of different blocks and then we'll insert them into the ceiling or into the uh, drawing. We also have the FM tuner, which is a, it's a really pretty basic, pretty easy operation, or I'm sorry, easy the electrical schematic and so that's a that's another project that we'll do in chapter nine so that's it good luck drawing your block